um, putting that together Gotta is that, not man. an easy thing to do. Destiny, what's up, man? How are you? Hi, what's up? I'm live. Don't say anything crazy. No, no, no. I won't. I won't. I won't. Uh, I, I, um, Andrew's live too. So I uh, just want to make sure, just so it's fair for everybody. So and, uh, Destiny, this is what I'm thinking the breakdown is, and let me know if you disagree. Mm -hmm. We'll each party five minutes to make an opening statement, introduce themselves, you know, identify their st stance, all that stuff. Um, and then we'll do three three-minute rounds where each of you speak uninterrupted, and then we'll do two five-minute rounds where it's open dialogue between the two of you, so five rounds in total, and then, uh, and that's pretty much it. So five minute, five minute opening, three three minute rounds where you're not interrupted, same thing with the opening, and then two five minute rounds where it's open dialogue between the two of you, is that fair? That sounds um, good to me. Sure, yeah, I guess, yeah. And then what I also was thinking is, we'll quickly in the beginning ident um, identify the definition of insurrection. I have here a violent uprising against an authority or government is that agreed upon definition uh i imagine the pro the definition is probably going to be a good chunk of the conversation i would imagine yeah. that's why because i pulled it right from google i typed in insurrection and that's this is specifically what google gave me so that way i'm not i'm not sure that either of us are going to be able to agree on the outset to a definition uh does that seem does that seem right to you destiny we will i think okay or i think we have to but <laughs> We'll no, I mean, we have, yeah, well, I mean, maybe, no, but I'm just saying on the outset here, if you want to. Oh, on the outset at the beginning, no, we won't. We won't, not yeah, before. I don't, gonna be I don't think we'll be able to, yeah. Yeah. Correct. Oh. So you guys don't want to use a violent uprising against an authority or government? Uh, I don't I don't think that, that we would be able to agree on that right at the outset. So I think that some of this uh, in the beginning will be us coming to some agreement with that. Does that sound correct to you, Destiny? Probably, yeah. That'll be part of yeah. the debate, yeah. Yeah, I think that that's right. That's fine. Uh, I guess you guys can make that uh, make that in your opening statements then. Okay. But for the audience that's watching, you know, this is what Google says. But you know, obviously, you guys can go ahead and uh, interpret it during the opening statement. Uh, and then, Bills, how are we looking as far as like going live on our side so that we can broadcast this? Because I know they're live on their part sides. Give me one minute. And All right, give us one minute, guys, and we'll get this thing uh, going. Bills is just setting up the OBS and everything else like that. Okay. You yeah. Do but. No problem. Yeah, I could do. Yeah, I could do an intro and all that. Yeah, I could do that. Um, what was that? Those, no? uh, yeah, I sent you. Oh, Destiny, do you? Yeah, three three things in the telegram in the telegram chat. Destiny, do you have any documents or videos that you want me to have on hand so that I can play them for you? I know uh, Andrew had a few, so I want to make sure I extend that courtesy to you as well. Um, not that I can think of right now. No. Okay. If something comes up, please let me know, and we'll pull it up on our side for you. Does he have your telegram? Uh. He Destiny has my direct number if he needs me, but yeah, if you if you if you think of something, Destiny, it's a return to speak or whatever within that three minutes. Let me know and I'll have my guys in the back research it and pull it up for you. Okay. Uh, same with you, Andrew. If you guys want that, during yeah, your, no problem, no problem. Appreciate yeah, it. It's your three. It's your three minutes, so you you can spend it however you like, and we'll do our best to quickly pull up if, something if you guys need it. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Uh, cool. Do you think the that, majority of the people? Oh, yeah, that was yeah. Gotcha. So. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, but other than that, Destiny, good to hear for see you, bro. I'm glad that you're uh, still here with us, man. <laughs> uh, I'm still barely alive, but I'm still here. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, dude. <clears throat> Going crazy on Twitter, man. I like. I, it's crazy. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh man. Are you sick? Are you okay? Yeah, I, I fucking, I, I've had to, I went to the RNC and I just came down with a bug ever since. I sound like uh, all fucking congested and shit. It's a lot better now, though. Yeah, it's way better than before. It was worse than this. I went ahead and commingled with all the people you hate. They made me sick. Destiny. Nice. Well, that's what happens because they were all unvaxxed, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Ah. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. If you was at the RNC, then they probably were all vaxxed, actually. Yeah, depending on how far you go, yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so guys, I'll um, we'll start at the stream and I'll say, "What's up, guys?" I'll do a quick little. You know what, man? Honestly, bro, I don't. We don't even got to play the intro music or anything like that. I'll just like we'll just go live, and then I'll, uh, you know, what I'm saying, do a quick little intro, and then I'll kind of make some quick announcements. Then, oh, my camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just make yeah. Keep it on camera too for me, and then we'll be we'll be good. That's good. 
Shout out to uh, Destiny and uh, Andrew Wilson's audience. You guys are seeing like the behind the scenes of how we get ready before a show. <laughs> uh. Well, I appreciate you moderating at that short notice. It's very kind of you to do. Uh, bro, of course, man. You guys are both you, the homie of both you guys, so it's, it's totally cool. Don't mind it at all. I see some familiar names in this chat too. Yeah. They know who they is. Yeah. So. All right. I'm going to start up the live. You're going to start up the live now? All right. Cool. So I won't even do my intro, guys. Like normally with the music and all that shit, I'm just going to what's up, guys? Welcome to, to Fresh Fit Podcast. I'm here with Destiny and Andrew Wilson. Boom. We'll do a, some quick announcements. And then I'll just turn. Oh, who wants to go first? Andrew or Destiny? I'll open first if Destiny has no problem with that. Sure. Yeah, I, I feel like that's fair because I was the challenger. All right. Destiny's okay with that. So uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll also give you guys like a, like a 30-second warning. So uh, so you guys kind of know, hey, try to wrap it up if you can. Okay. And I'll time each round. So the first one, the five minutes, the opening statement will be five minutes. Just waiting on the confirmation. Just waiting on the confirmations? Okay. You got my friend Big Mo in studio or what? Yeah, he's here. Tell they him both, I said what's up. Because they knew what we were doing, so they're like, nah, we don't want to fuck this one up, so we're both going to come down. Awesome. Yeah. Refreshing, making sure I get confirmation. Yeah. We started the stream. We're just waiting for it to like pop up on all the different platforms. Sure. I think we're live up on YouTube now. I see YouTube. YouTube's up. Okay. And then once we're go on all of them, I'll make the intro. Welcome, guys. Roll in. Roll in. Roll in when you guys can. Waiting on locals and rumble. Okay. Oh, I think I see locals. Right when I said that, that means rumble should be. All right. We're live yes, we're on right. all of them. Yes, we are. Okay. All right, guys. What's up? Welcome wait, to the front. Oh. Let's go to B to one. Uh, Gotta get three, uh, go two, one. All right, and we are live. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Fresh Air Podcast, man. I'm joined by two people that I call my buddies, good guys, um, contrary to what people might say. Uh, Andrew Wilson and Destiny. Today, we're gonna be I'm gonna be hosting a debate between them on is was January 6th an insurrection? Okay, the way this debate is gonna go is we're gonna have opening statements uh, by both parties for five minutes, where they're gonna you know identify their arguments. Their stance, who they are, introduce themselves to you, etc. That's gonna be five minutes uninterrupted. Then we're gonna have three minutes where each of them are gonna be able to lodge their arguments for uh, three rounds of that for three minutes, going back and forth. And then we're gonna have two rounds where it's an open five-minute dialogue. I'll be timing each round, staying as a neutral moderator. Uh, so, guys, if you're not familiar with Destiny or Andrew Wilson, please go subscribe to both their channels. I'm cool. Both these guys. Um, obviously, we don't agree on everything, thing, but you know, I respect both these guys as skilled debaters, and they're uh, you know good colleagues of mine. So please go check out their channels on YouTube and on Rumble and all the platforms that they're on. Dominic Liberal on Twitter, uh, the Paleo Christ, is it the Paleo Christcon on uh, on just X? Paleo Christcon, yeah, yeah on X. So go check them out on all the platforms, guys. I'm happy to be able to host this debate. So um, other than that, we're live on all platforms: YouTube, Rumble, etc. Check us out Rumble.com Rumble com slash Fresh Fit. And Andrew, I will turn it to you to go ahead and. Uh, Start with opening statements, and I'll start the timer. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you to the entire Fresh and Fit audience for coming out, and to DGG as well. We're here today to debate if the events of the January 6th Capitol riots were an insurrection or if they weren't. Simple. It's a simple debate prompt. They either were or they weren't. Looking into the idea of insurrection itself, it isn't exactly clear what the meaning of it is. It does always seem to be tied together with violence or some will to overthrow a government law, government system, government itself, or resistance to that law, or something akin to this. The Supreme Court hasn't given us any guidance on this as they wash their hands of it, and to date, not a single person has been charged or convicted of insurrection who participated in any of the J6 rioting. This includes Donald Trump himself, who was acquitted of inciting insurrection. You would think, with no clear guidance of what an insurrection is, a lack of anybody being prosecuted for uh, this supposed insurrection who participated and a president acquitted of inciting one, that that would be that. The events of January 6th were a protest that turned into a riot. This is nothing new. Democrats do it all the time. 
In fact, Destiny in 2021 completely agreed with my current assessment. Please, if you don't mind, play clip one. Okay, we will uh, make that available to you. Bills is going to roll it up right now. And I will go ahead and give you an extra five seconds just uh, on your thing, just because. Okay, go ahead, uh, play the video, please. Do you think the majority of the people there were were actually trying to do that and all they managed to do was like kill like one woman got shot by the cops? You're fucking delusional. I think most of the people probably showed up to protest because they were fucking mad and then shit got riled up. They were probably almost <laughs> for sure, I would say, some genuine bad actors there that had fantasies yep. of invading the fucking capital and shit. Now, I think I heard from the FBI that it was like 5% or less had some plan to do something. Even that number sounds a little bit high because 5% of however many thousand people, there's a lot of people. But I don't think every single person who went there, their goal was to destroy the White or destroy the Capitol building and take it over. But because if they were, we would have saw way more shit. Okay. Now, just so you know, I have no visual on my end when those play, and I'd appreciate it if you guys could put the visual up on my end as well. Okay. In fact, Destiny even agrees such rioting and political violence is part of the democratic process, akin to voting, he says. He said this to justify the George Floyd or BLM riots, that such riots were just one side of the Democrat coin and baked in to our Democrat process, the tails in, and just the other half of democracy, he says. Of course, he later denied this. Please play clip two. Okay, and we'll uh, get this so that you can uh, see, see it. Just one second, I'm gonna stop the clock while we, we're, we're right now we're two minutes and 40 seconds in. Shit. Oh, hold on, Bills. I'm gonna start the clock once, back up once, to be fair here, once the clip is up. Can you see it, Andrew? I cannot see the clip, no, on my end. He's going to make it visible to you here in a second. Great. And I stopped the clock just so everybody knows. Bear with us, guys. We're using a million different things. OBS, Zoom, all this other stuff. Shout out to Bills in the back, working hard. Can you see it now? I can see something. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So we will roll the clip now. I'm going to start the clock back up. Bills, go ahead. Disingenuous back of shit. Because, as I've debated you in the past, you started talking before January 6th ever occurred about how the BLM riots were justified. It was just the other side of the coin of voting. Of course, once you realized that grip wouldn't do as well for you when you were debating the Rittenhouse shit, you completely 180'd your position. All did, I ever, hold on, did I ever say writing is the other side of the coin of voting? Probably did. That's a really strange statement if I did. If I did, that's a really strange statement. Go ahead, okay. Find clip. Activism and riots are one side of the coin, and the other side is voting. Yeah. There's conspiratorial at all. I think that affecting political change like this is fine. Like that's part of the goal. Like, like activism and riots are one side of the coin, and the other side is voting. Okay. Uh, woo. So this is twenty seconds in. Go ahead. So why the radical change of heart on this topic from Destiny? This complete one eighty. Well, that's simple. He hates Donald Trump. A simple motivation, but at least understandable. He also hates Trump supporters. In order for him to justify that he wants them all to be unalived, he needs to brand them all as traitors and insurrectionists. In this way, he can build a case that Trump supporters are evil, and so it is justified to use violence against them. To recap that, Trump supporters are evil, therefore anything which happens to them is fine. Going so far as to say his friend Pisco, the only, to his friend Pisco, the only reason he wouldn't have liked Trump to have been uh, unalived um, by this would-be assassin is because it would motivate Republicans. This, of course, gives us an entailment that if it wouldn't motivate Trump supporters, he would be fine with Trump having met his demise in this assassination attempt. And this is the last clip. Play clip three, please, and then I'll wrap this up. Okay, we're four minutes and 20 seconds in. I'm going to stop the watch while we pull this up. Approximately 424 seconds, but I'm adding another five from the first clip and how we were pulling it up, so... So far beyond that. So far. Okay. I'll start the clock back up once we roll the clip. Can you see it, guys? Can you see it, Andrew? Oh, oh sorry. He's, he's screen sharing it right now. Give us one second. We'll pull it up. Thank you, audience, and thank you, thank you guys for bearing with us here. Many things going on. We want to make sure that Andrew can see it as well as the audience. Yep, I can see it. You can see it? Okay. Uh, Bills, uh, go ahead. I'll start the timer back up. So far beyond that. So far giving a fuck beyond any of these fucking losers. But go ahead. Yeah, fine. Can I ask you a question? So... And you don't have to answer if you don't want to. Yeah. Do you wish the attempt had been successful? <sighs> Do I wish that the attempt had been successful? Uh, fuck, am I even allowed to say anything about that? You don't have to answer that. 
Here's what here's what I'll say. Here, this is what I will say. I don't know because I'm trying to fed post or whatever. Here's what I will say. A failed attempt is probably the worst outcome of anything that could have happened. I'll say that much. I disagree. I think a successful attempt, a su if that had happened. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, hold on. We might agree. Uh, the successful attempt. Or stop real quick, Bill. It would be an attempt at that point. The successful. Uh, real quick. So, guys, we just hit the pretty much the five minute mark. Destiny, if you're okay with it, I can let this kind of go on another minute or so, and I'll afford you an extra minute and give you six. Are yeah, you, okay? you can. Yeah, you can let me have this thing out. Yeah. You sure? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So we'll complete this out. I'll time it. Whatever I gave Andrew, I will give to you as well on your opening statements if you're okay with that. Go ahead, Bill. Roll the clip back. Thank you, Destiny. Uh, whatever it might be the worst thing that happened, but if it was the worst thing, it was just because of like the country's reaction afterwards, basically, which is possible. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I mean. So, ultimately. <laughs> Destiny needs to be able to provide us with what an insurrection actually is, an actual working legal definition or even a personal one so we can work off of that to understand the mindset of a person who claims this was an insurrection even as nobody ultimately is prosecuted for an insurrection. He, to date, hasn't done this for the same reason the Supreme Court and higher courts won't. If they do define it strictly and categorize it strictly, then it's likely Democrats and even Republicans are engaging in them all the time. Non-stop, in fact. I am, in fact, willing to, in the ultimate spirit of good faith, concede that if Destiny just can't really define an insurrection or tell us what goes into that category and not into the category of a riot, that he really has no business calling anybody an insurrectionist, especially when nobody's been charged with an insurrection in regards to J6. Nobody, and certainly not convicted. I will concede, however, if he concedes Democrats are likely involved in insurrections all the time, using violence for political change, I'll concede Republicans may be as well if his definition is that broad. However, that will eliminate his moral high ground for the justification of do what you want to them because they're traitors. That would also make you a traitor. With that, I'll cede my time. Note in that video... Um, that the entire audience, when he was asked this question by Pisco, said, yes, we would have preferred that Trump was unalive during that uh, assassination attempt. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so that I have six, approximately six minutes and 45 seconds there. Uh, Destiny, I will reset the clock and allot you the same exact amount of time to stay fair here. Um, let me know when you are ready, and I'll restart the, the clock. Yeah, I'm ready whenever. Ready? Okay, I'm going to start it now. I'll give you 6.45, and go ahead, brother. All right. I believe that the subject matter of the debate is whether or not January 6th is an insurrection or would be considered an insurrection. Um, originally, I thought there was going to be a 1v1 debate against me and Andrew, but I can do a 1v2 debate against my 2021 less educated self as well. Uh, I have no problem speaking to arguments I've made in prior clips. I have no problem speaking to current arguments made by Andrew. Uh, so we can head down that road. I think that the first thing that we need to acknowledge uh, when we talk about the structure of the United States government is that the Constitution of the United States is the supreme law of the land. The Constitution is what powers our three branches of government, and it sits above every other part of our government, and every part of our government must comport to the Constitution. I think this is a foundational American belief uh, and principle, and if you don't share on this foundational belief, then we're never going to connect in any sort of meaningful way when we talk about how U.S. law or U.S. process or procedure or whatever should be carried out. So that being said, there was an amendment to the Constitution, the 14th Amendment, and Section 3 of that amendment basically goes on to say that any prior oath taker that has engaged in or aided in uh, an insurrection is no longer allowed to hold office, essentially. Now, the question that we come uh, to today is trying to define what is an insurrection. And while in modern times, it seems like an insurrection is a term left to a dictionary or a term left to internet debaters, at the time that the, the amendment, the 14th Amendment, was framed, what was an well, what was an insurrection was pretty well understood. Uh, an insurrection includes four vital elements. One is an assemblage, meaning a group of people that have come together. Two is resisting any law or interfering with the course of a government proceeding. Three is you have to do this by way of force or intimidation. And four is it has to be through a, for, a, for a public concern or a public cause, not a private thing that one might be interested in. Um, just for some understandings of when we say an assemblage, uh, we can look to in 1861, uh, Justice Benjamin Curtis said a combination or conspiracy by which different individuals are united in one common purpose. So not just a bunch of people in a city protesting different things, but a group of people that are united in one common purpose. Um, we can look to Justice Samuel, uh, Samuel Chase uh, in the case of Freeze in the year 1800. He says if a body of people conspire and meditate an insurrection to resist or oppose the execution of any statute of the United 
United States, a statute such as the ECA, the Electoral Count Act, which is what they were united on January 6th to insurrect against. They were opposing the uh, execution of that. They are only guilty of a high misdemeanor, but if they proceed to carry such intention into execution by force, which we did see on the day of January 6th, regardless of if every member engaged in force or just one, uh, they are guilty of the treason of levying war, and the quantum of force employed neither lessens nor increases the crime, whether by 100 or 1,000 persons is wholly immaterial. It doesn't matter if you have an insurrection of 50 people, 100 people, or 1,000 people. You only really need two people there to make it an insurrection. Um, <clears throat> In terms of whether or not they were uh, resisting a law or interfering with the cause of government, um, we can quote here, uh, an insurrection against the United States requires resistance to any statute or some public law of the United States. Um, this is a quote by a uh, judge um, in, I think, 1826. Uh, Curtis uh, spoke this to a jury. He says, the law does not distinguish between a purpose to prevent the execution of one or several or all laws. Uh, an insurrection could be directed at a legislature as well as at executive officials. Uh, William Rawl declared that an effort to coerce repeal of a general law to be an overt act of levying war. And um, Justice Field's opinion in, a, in the Great House Court case held that any effort to coerce the conduct of government constituted an insurrection, such as when people went to the White House, or I'm sorry, went to the Capitol to coerce Pence to overthrow the election, which is what Donald Trump told them to do, uh, by force or by intimidation. Uh, quoting Justice Marshall in 1807, the most comprehensive definition of levying war against the king or against the United States, which I have seen, requires an assemblage of men ready to act and with an intent to do some treasonable act and armed in warlike manner or else assembled in such numbers as to supersede the necessity of arms. You don't necessarily need weapons to do it. You could just have the, the numbers of people there threatening to use force or or intimidation. Um, and then for a public purpose, obviously, um, the insurrection is to, I'm quoting Judge uh, John Cain here, insurrections to redress by force national grievances or to form real or imaginary evils of a public nature. Uh, obviously, they were uh, uh, protesting the vote. That's what they were to, there to do. Uh, this is obviously a public issue. So to recount, for the assembly, there were hundreds of people that breached the Capitol building. There were thousands that trespassed on federal land. For two, there was a clear resistance to the federal law. The trespassers were there to contravene the Electoral Count Act. There was a plethora of evidence brought up in the Anderson versus Griswold case about this, uh, where, quoting the justices, uh, quoting the judges on that case, they said, substantial evidence in the record showed that the mob's unified purpose was to hinder or prevent Congress from counting the electoral votes as required by the 12th Amendment and from certifying the 2020 presidential election. The third element, the resistance made extensive use of force. This is self-evident just by watching any of the videos. To quote the Colorado Supreme Court again, the mob repeatedly and violently assaulted police officers who were trying to defend the Capitol. Uh, obviously, there were calls to hang Mike Pence, and people marched very famously with 1776 signs, which, as many in this audience might be familiar with, was a very popular insurrection in US history, uh, or a rebellion even, one might say. And then for a public purpose, it was obviously for the public purpose of resisting the what they perceived to be as the stealing of the election. Um, there are ways to try to counter this argument. We can either use nonsense definitions of insurrection, but that doesn't really matter. The only thing that matters was the public understanding and the legal understanding of insurrection at the time the 14th Amendment was created and when Section 3 was framed, because that's what the Constitution demands, that we look at what was thought of as an insurrection when the language was added to the Constitution. Uh, we can try to divert by talking about BLM or anything else, and I'm happy to dive into all of those examples if we are going to concede on the original argument that January 6th satisfies all four elements of what I consider an insurrection to be. Um, if we want to concede that and move on to analyzing any particular BLM action or whatever, that's totally fine. Uh, we can talk about the likeliness to work, of which an insurrection has never been defined as. An insurrection doesn't necessarily have to lead to the overthrow of a government. That would be understood as a rebellion. Uh, every insurrection is not a rebellion, though every rebellion starts as an insurrection. And then when we say, this is a common one as well, why was no one charged with an insurrection? Uh, people can be charged or couldn't be charged with crimes for a variety of reasons, but for purposes of the 14th Amendment, nothing in there requires the criminal conviction of the crime of insurrection, only that an insurrection occurred and that one engaged in it or aided it. All right. Uh, and that is 640. Okay. So uh, just five seconds shy. That completes the opening statements. Uh, really good arguments from both sides here. Uh, we'll go into round one. I'll turn it back. So we just completed opening statements, guys. Each party had six uh, minutes and 45 seconds to make their original stance and uh, their first uh, opening statements. We'll go to round one. I'll set the clock for three minutes. Andrew, let me know when you are ready. And yeah, I'm, I'm ready. Okay, timer is going now. Go ahead. Three yeah, minutes. so let's start with this idea of my definition. What the hell do I care about your definition? Nobody has been prosecuted for any insurrection by any 
definition. Destiny comes through and he gives us this list. He says, one, an assemblage. Okay. Two, resisting any law or interfering with the course of a government proceeding. Okay. Three, by force or intimidation. Okay. Four, for a public purpose. He has just outlined basically almost every single political riot I've ever heard of. That is what that is outlining. So let's see, an assemblage. This would cover a riot, a bunch of people assembling. Resisting any law or interfering with the course of a government proceeding. Uh, that could be shutting down roadways for commerce. That could mean anything. By force or intimidating, if you have Black Lives Matter, other groups like this who are out there saying no justice, no peace, that would be very intimidating. And then for public purpose, very nebulous. All of this is completely nebulous language. He has not actually given us a definition at all. Uh, by the way, if you could cam me while I'm talking, I'd appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> he has not given us a definition at all. He's, he's just kind of given us these, this loose, nebulous um, you know, framework for what is or isn't a, uh, an insurrection. So let's kind of dive into a couple more things here. He says people can or can't be charged for a variety of reasons. He, that's not saying anything. So what? Yeah, that's true. Maybe they committed insurrection and they weren't charged for insurrection, but also maybe they did not commit insurrection and that's why they weren't charged with insurrection. That's a non-argument. He says that these elements, third element, self-evident Colorado Supreme Court using 1776 signs. People use 1776 signs all the time and have absolutely no interest in any type of rebellion whatsoever it's very common for people to have those as bumper stickers that doesn't mean that they're going to be engaging in any kind of rebellion or insurrection at all he also as he uh talks about these various uh rulings he says treason of levying war comes in obviously insurrection seems to have something to do with levying war against the united states or at least some type of start to levy war against the united states he still has not actually demonstrated any of this He's just given us this really nebulous idea, an assemblage resisting any law or interfering with a course of government proceeding by force or intimidating for public. This is very nebulous. So unless Destiny is going to concede that it, anything which meets this criteria is an insurrection, uh, then I'm, I'm not even sure how to go forward with this debate. How in the world can he say essentially almost any riot on planet Earth uh, or any assemblage, even a peaceful protest where they shut down the roads, is an insurrection. That can't be true. That just can't be true. Okay. Um, uh, we had uh, ended there at about 2.57. Andrew, you're up on, on our channel. They can see you. I don't know if it's on Yeah, your... we're good on mine, too. Oh, you are Okay, perfect. I just want to make sure that we're there. So, But you are definitely up on, and I'm, wh whoever's speaking, I always make them the main person. So, Destiny, I'm going to put, uh, this is round one. I'm going to put three minutes on the clock for you. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, go ahead, brother. So I think my definition is pretty clear. There is an assemblage. There's a clear resistance to the implementation or the execution of some federal law. Um, the resistance has an aim to make use of force or intimidation, and it's gathered for a particular public purpose. Uh, BLM almost automatically fails on the fact that these were not usually demonstrations against federal law. Uh, I don't know the federal law or the federal thing that was being resisted by BLM. Uh, but again, I'm happy to dive into any particular BLM supposed insurrection or riot uh, if you'd like. But again, I, I mean, that has nothing to do with January 6th. And if you want, then you can see that entire argument. And we can move on to analyzing individual BLM instances. But again, you'd have to show that there was some implementation or carrying out of some federal function for it to be an insurrection against the United States government. States might have their own definitions of state insurrections. I'm unaware of any. Um, so to uh, say again, uh, my definition of insurrection, like very clearly, has four elements. Uh, if you want to suggest an alternate definition that you feel more accurately comports with what you would consider an insurrection to be, that's fine. But we can't just say that it's nebulous and there is no definition when we have, um, we've got references made in our Constitution and in our uh, federal criminal code to insurrection. That doesn't make any sense. Um, we can complain about people being charged with an insurrection or not. Um, but whether or not somebody is charged with an insurrection, again, has nothing to do with the event itself. Um, for instance, if I were to look and see at any number of BLM uh, riots, if I were to look at a riot, would a challenge to that riot be, well, was anybody charged with rioting? If I could show you a riot where people clearly engaged in a riot, where there was a mass of people that were engaged in violent behavior that involved the destruction of some property or violent activity, but I were to say, well, look, nobody was actually charged with rioting. 
Would you say then that, well, I guess nobody was actually, uh, or there wasn't a riot that actually happened? Nobody would make that uh, claim. There's a whole list of reasons why a prosecutor may or may not charge for particular crimes. Uh, in this particular case, there were really good reasons not to head down that uh, insurrection charge road because it would probably put the Supreme Court in a very hairy area, which, which they might end up getting into anyway in terms of actually having a strict definition of what insurrection is. Um, but again, the 14th Amendment doesn't require a strict definition of insurrection in order to disbar somebody from running from office. Uh, all it needs is for a court to engage in asking the question of whether or not somebody had engaged in an insurrection, and if they had and were a prior oath taker, then they were barred uh, from taking any uh, public office in the future. Uh, so yeah, again, if, if there's an alternate definition that wants to be explored for an insurrection, then I welcome that. But that definition, it needs to have, it needs to comport with the historical and legal understanding of what an insurrection was. Otherwise, it's just meaningless, meandering, um, yeah, opining that means nothing when we should be thinking like, what was the definition of insurrection at the time the 14th Amendment was drafted? Okay, uh, that's two minutes and 40 seconds. Uh, you don't want to use the rest of the 20 seconds, Destiny? Okay. Um, right. Yeah, I, well, I mean, like, there, we can, if this ends up going into, like, a whole bunch of, like, BLM stuff, I mean, we can get to that, but that has no bearing on whether J6 would be considered an insurrection or not, so. Okay, uh, so two minutes and 57 seconds. Uh, that completes round one. Um, I will restart the clock. We'll move into round two. I'll turn it back to you, Andrew. Uh, let me know when you're ready, and I'll turn the clock on. So I'm not claiming that this has anything to do with BLM. I'm doing an internal critique and saying that if you're going to apply these nebulous standards to this, then you must apply them to this. If this category of category A over here also would include everything which includes a riot, then we would need to know what the delineating factor is. He, he claims here you must, there must be some federal element. However, that's not in his definition. His definition does not include any federal element. To go over his definition again, an assemblage resisting law by force or intimidation for public purpose. It doesn't say anything about a federal element. He just pulled that out of his ass. I don't know where the hell he got that from. It's definitely not in his definition. If it was, he should have said that that was in his definition. He said he keeps going back to this illogical idea that just because X doesn't happen doesn't mean X isn't true. Yeah, that's true, but it also doesn't mean X is true. So making the claim that, well, wait a second, Andrew, just because they weren't actually charged with insurrection doesn't mean they weren't guilty of insurrection. Well, that's nice, but it doesn't mean they were either. And I have the evidence on my side as none of them were actually prosecuted for insurrection. None of them were prosecuted for insurrection, and Trump was acquitted for inciting insurrection. So the evidence is on my side. He would actually have to demonstrate that this was an insurrection and that they were all wrong that they were completely incorrect in not charging it this way. He just keeps saying, well, there's a variety of reasons why they didn't. Well, that's nice. Couldn't one of the reasons be because it wasn't an insurrection? Yes, that seems to be a very obvious reason, doesn't it? Um, <clears throat> going back to my opening, I just want to kind of point out that Destiny has changed his entire idea on this, whereas at first he claimed in 2021, this was in no way an insurrection that it fit the criteria of a riot better from anybody who's looking at it objectively. I agree with him. That's exactly what it fits. But he still has not demonstrated at all that this was actually an insurrection. He just says, well, I have this nebulous definition. He also says, give me a counter definition. It's not my burden to give you a counter definition. What do you mean? I'm not calling him insurrectionist. You're calling him insurrectionist. I don't have to define for you what that means. You have to define for me what that means. Giving me these four uh, elements here is meaningless unless you can tell me what goes in those categories specifically that does not go in the category for rioting. Because as I look at an assemblage, uh, resisting any law yes. by force or intimidating or for public that could all just be rioting that does not really tell me what goes in the category you didn't include federal anything so i would like for you to actually expand on this definition so i can understand what the hell you're talking about and why the j6ers specifically fit this criteria all right um that is two minutes and 49 seconds uh destiny i'll turn it to you um whenever you're ready and we are in round two right now the bottom of round yeah, so people, like, again, the, so there's two parts to the uh, insurrection, uh, two elements that I don't think would fit. So the first one is uh, an assemblage. That would clearly fit a riot, I think, but it, um, it would fit a riot and it would fit an insurrection. Um, the second part is resisting a particular law or interfering with the course of a government proceeding. There are plenty of riots that aren't riots to resist 
like the implementation of a law or to interfere necessarily with like some government proceeding. We can imagine a million reasons why people might riot outside of a baseball game, people might riot um, in protest to a statement that was made or in, in relation to, um, I don't know, the outcome of a sporting event. Like there's tons of people that can riot that aren't rioting with the goal of resisting the implementation of a particular law or trying to interfere with the course of some uh, government proceeding. So the, the part two, the second element I've listed really wouldn't comport with um, with most riots. Um, and then the third one is uh, the third element by force or intimidation. Um, I would say that riots generally have a forceful or intimidating aspect to them, although they generally happen spontaneously. Usually they're not planned in advance to use like force or intimidation. Um, so uh, <clears throat> to quote uh, Justice Greer, uh, quote, legal authorities carefully distinguished planned insurrections from spontaneous riots. Uh, Justice, Robert, Justice Robert Greer charged the grand jury in the United States v. Hanway that a defendant who was not leagued with violent resistors to federal law could not be prosecuted for treason. Uh, Greer insisted that spontaneous riots were not insurrections, that insurrections required a commitment to use force to resist law, not spur of the moment violence. Most riots just kind of like happen. Uh, it's pretty rare that they are planned in advance. And I think we all agree that if they are planned in advance, it takes on a much different character and arguably uh, could call under it like different types of crimes. If people uh, you know, engage in rioting, it's not good. But if people are literally planning it out in advance, we are calling in a whole bunch of different crimes there than just the simple thing of calling a particular thing a riot. And then for the fourth thing, when we say for a public purpose, the fourth element, this is the second thing that I don't think most riots would necessarily be in opposition to, that we are insurrecting for some sort of public grievance um, relating to like the, the actions of a particular government. Uh, so like you might riot, for instance, like BLM might riot against like police violence, but what is the, there's not like a particular federal statute or federal law there. Um, in terms of me specifying the federal part, well, I mean, J6 was a uh, insurrection against like a, a federal entity. Again, if we want to talk about like state insurrections or something, I, I guess we can, but the differentiating factor here, the reason why I have the federal part is because we're talking about federal insurrections and especially for the 14th Amendment, the federal insurrection part is what we're kind of talking about. I'm not even sure if you can do a state insurrection. Maybe you can. Um, but I mean, like summarizing this argument, like the Colorado court found that Donald Trump acted as part of an assemblage Okay, that he helped bring into being. He called the people there. Uh, Trump was resisting the enforcement of federal and constitutional rules. He was contravening the 12th Amendment, and he was resisting the Electoral Count Act. Um, Donald Trump, he took numerous illegal actions to prevent the peaceful transition of presidential power. This is like a function of the government. Uh, he engaged in ongoing an ongoing course of conduct and producing time. violent yeah. resistance to the peaceful transfer of presidential power, and he was attempting to decide support uh, through that Congress. Yeah. Uh, whether or not somebody's charged doesn't matter. Okay. That is time. Uh, so... What I'll do is um, that uh, that concludes round two. Um, Andrew, uh, I'll turn it back to you unless you want me to give uh, Destiny a little bit extra time and I can give you that extra time as well on the back end, but I'll let you choose that. Yeah, I'm fine. He can finish. Okay. Um, Destiny, go ahead and finish. And Yeah, I will... my, sure. The final point was that... Um... Yeah, but the, the, my final statement is, okay, if you looked at the Colorado court case, they found that Donald Trump acted as part of an assemblage that he helped bring to being. It said that uh, Trump was resisting the enforcement of federal and constitutional rules, that Trump took numerous illegal actions to prevent the peaceful transition of presidential power. He engaged in an ongoing course of conduct aimed at producing violent resistance to the peaceful transfer of presidential power. Um, he attempted to incite his supporters to attack Congress, which they did, and that Trump's speech occurred sufficiently close in time and place to when and where the insurrection took place to be considered an incitement. Like every single part of this, like very easily and very cleanly meets the definition of an insurrection. If we want to argue that my definition isn't clean or that my four elements aren't being met, that's, well, I don't know how we can argue that. I think all four elements are being met. If we want to argue that, well, every single riot would, uh, you know, fall into this, then we could say, well, fine, Destiny, I agree. For your definition of insurrection, fine, January 6th was an insurrection. Now let's talk about these other events and we could talk about whether they fit or don't fit. Or you can give me your own definition of insurrection and then we can go from there. Okay, that added an extra 55 seconds. So it will go into round three. Andrew, I will give you that, so you will have three minutes and 55 seconds to uh, yeah. your time. So uh, I'll start at the clock now. Yeah, so again, uh, trying to put the burden on me to give you a definition of your claim is insane. Uh, as we went through your definition here, uh, it's really funny because I'm going to use your own logic back to you. Just because they weren't charged with an insurrection doesn't mean it wasn't an insurrection. Oh, okay. Well, they were actually charged with uh, elements of rioting. So I'm going to say it was actually rioting. And I'm also going to say that, wait a second, your definition here seems to be more about rioting than anything else by your own claim. An assemblage would fit a riot, says Destiny. That's his first claim. Resisting any law or interfering with the course of a government proceeding. It wouldn't fit 
rioting itself, says Destiny, even though rioting itself is against the law. What do you mean? Of course it's impeding the law. Well, how could it not be impeding the law? Rioting itself is against the law. I don't know where the hell you came up with that. By force or intimidation, Destiny concedes riots require force for a public purpose. He concedes that's a riot. So really, under his definition, this is just a riot. Uh, the only thing that we're arguing about here is number two, resisting any law or interfering with the course of a government proceeding. Let's try this again. Resisting any law or interfering with the course of a government proceeding. A riot itself is uh, resisting the law because it's illegal to riot. So I don't understand how that, again, would not just be a riot. All of these things seem to fall into the category of what people were charged with, which is much more along and akin to rioting than it is any type of insurrection. He still hasn't told us the distinction that fits in this category, why this isn't a riot, even though everybody was charged under that kind of branch of rioting and not charged for insurrection. This is a garbage definition. It's totally nebulous, right? And he keeps on saying, well, wait a second, Andrew. Why don't you go ahead and concede that unless you can go against all four of these points, why well, don't actually have to do that? All I need to do is say, okay, all these four points fit a different criteria better than insurrection. And apparently he agrees. He agrees on point one, point three, and point four. The only thing he argues is point two, but his argument for point two makes no sense because rioting itself is illegal. So therefore, you are resisting any law or interfering with the course of a government proceeding. Well, the government proceeding is to enforce law. You would be interfering with the government enforcing law if you're rioting. So all of these fall under the better criteria of riot, which is it's totally consistent in my mind because that was the criteria in which people were charged, not with insurrection. And I really need Destiny to answer to that. Okay, uh, that was two minutes and forty seconds. You still have a minute left, Andrew. You're going to concede that round, then? Yeah, I'll let him. I'll let him go ahead and answer to it. Cool. So I'm gonna. So um, I will turn it back to you, Destiny. We're in round uh, three, and uh, this is the second part of round three. So your turn, Destiny. I'll uh, start the clock back up for you. Breaking a law and resisting law are not the same thing. Usually when people riot, they're not rioting with the purpose of making arson or murder or, um, or, or whatever other crimes are being broken to make those legal things. Usually they're breaking laws, not with the intent of like resisting the implementation or the execution of those laws or resisting or uh, contravening the execution of like some function of government. Um, when people were rioting on January 6th, the goal of that was to stop the execution of the Electoral Count Act. It was to stop the purpose of the government, the execution, the function of government to do the peaceful transfer of power. They weren't simply engaged in violence and breaking the law. They were resisting the carrying out of the law, the Electoral, uh, the Electoral Count Act, the ECA. Um, and, and I don't know, we, we can loop on this over and over again, but again, if I can show you in Kenosha, if I can show you in Seattle, if I can show you a riot, if I can give you a video of cities burning, uh, people screaming and throwing shit, of you know property being destroyed or damaged, and then you were to go, wow, that kind of looks like a riot to me, I would go, yeah, it kind of does. However, nobody was actually charged with the crime of rioting, so do you change your mind on that? Probably wouldn't affect your opinion at all. Um, again, whether or not you levy a particular charge at a person is way different than whether or not a particular event was a thing. Remember, a, when you levy a, a charge at somebody, a criminal charge, what you're really saying is that you can take a person, an individual, and prove beyond a reasonable doubt that no reasonable mind would, um, would agree that something else could have happened in front of a jury. That's what criminal court is for. Proving that somebody engaged in a crime beyond a reasonable doubt in a criminal court is not the standard that we use to declare a particular thing a Thing. You don't have to prove in criminal court beyond a reasonable doubt that a thing was an insurrection or that a thing was a riot unless we were charging somebody with an actual crime. Okay, uh, there's uh, that's 150 on the clock. So um, that concludes round three. And I'm going to turn it to you gentlemen. You guys can let me know what you want. We can either do another round of three minutes uninterrupted debating if you guys want to formulate arguments a bit more because I know there is some. I would, I would like to do one more round if we like, could. Or uh, Destiny, are you okay with that? Sure. Okay, and then after that, so we'll go into a fourth round with the three-minute uh, debate time limit where no interruptions. Then after that, we can get into the five minutes of discourse between you two where you can actually speak. But Is that fair for everybody? Sure. Sure. Cool. All right, so I will go ahead and reset the clock. Uh, this will be round four. Uh, take it away, Andrew. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is an absurd argument. We'll go right back to Destiny's logic again. He says just because, uh, you know, somebody wasn't charged with X doesn't mean X didn't happen. 
Uh, this is the same. This is complete and total obfuscation, by the way, because ultimately what's going on here is that these do fit the criteria much better for a riot. And under the purview of rioting, these are the, the types of charges which were levied at these people. Destiny says specifically under point two, he said and he didn't answer to this. He said Relist, resisting any law or interfering with the course of a government proceeding wouldn't fit rioting. Yes, it does fit rioting. It fits rioting better than anything else I can think of. Yes, you are immediately, upon rioting, resisting the law, and you are obstructing the law immediately. That is what a riot is. It's an unlawful assembly. So uh, how he could say this, in fact, each point, he concedes on point one, an assemblage that would fit a riot. An assemblage would fit a riot. That's point one. He agrees. Okay. Point three, by force or intimidation, uh, intimidation, he agrees on point three that that is a riot. He agrees on point four. He conceded on that as well. And then he just conceded on point two. He couldn't exactly tell us why resisting any law or interfering with the course of a government proceeding wouldn't fit a riot. Of course it fits a riot. All of these, in fact, fit the events of January 6th perfectly. Perfectly. And if he's conceding that, hey, these fit a riot perfectly, the events of January 6th were a riot, under this definition, which he essentially has conceded is true, then the charges were appropriate that this was a riot and not an insurrection. This could not have been an insurrection. The, his own definition proves that this is more akin to a riot. He still hasn't really told us, by the way, what an insurrection is, just these kind of four nebulous points. But these four nebulous points fit a riot perfectly, perfectly. And he's basically conceded to three of them on the outset. And then on the second, he's basically conceded that as well, because resisting any law or interfering with the course of a government proceeding would fit a riot by its very nature. The reason it would fit a riot by its very nature is because it's immediately an unlawful assembly. You're resisting the law. You're resisting the police. You're resisting, resisting, resisting. So whether that's done at a federal level or a state level, I think it would still fate, uh, uh, meet the same fate of being more akin to a riot. This Let definition really moves towards a riot and not towards an insurrection. He has not told us the distinction yet. And so, again, I think that the entire reason he wants this only painted as an insurrection, even though nobody's ever been charged with an insurrection, even though Trump was cleared of inciting an insurrection, is so that he can make justifications for why the other side deserves what it gets because they're a bunch of traitors. Thus far, no, I'm sorry, this, uh, this definition nor this logic adds up. The logic of saying, well, just because it they weren't charged with a thing doesn't mean it wasn't the thing fine but that doesn't mean it was the thing either and by your criteria it seems like it was this other thing okay that's three minutes and 10 seconds uh i will make the clock the same for you destiny to keep it fair uh i will start the timer if you're ready now yeah i don't i i guess we're just gonna loop on these points um resisting a law is not the same thing as breaking a law if you could show me that there was a particular riot where people assembled and the goal of that riot was when they were rioting, they wanted to riot to make rioting legal um, and that they had gathered, you know, in order to change the law in a particular area and they were going to use force and intimidation to do it. We're, we're here to riot today because we're going to make rioting legal. Then sure, then we could argue that that's probably an insurrection. Um, but I mean, these are the four elements that were historically understood at the time. Nobody had any issues at the time charging people with crimes of insurrection. Nobody had any confusion at the time historically. Um, maybe there were Shays' rebellions, the Whiskey insurrection, the Burr insurrection, John Brown's raids. Um, you had convictions of, um, you know, like a Pennsylvania farmer, uh, I think, set fire to a house of a tax collector in 1794. He was charged with an insurrection. Um, John Fries and Friends made a show of arms that resulted in the release of persons charged with federal tax evasion. That was considered an insurrection uh, in 1847 when Hispanic and Native Americans attacked occupying American officials in New Mexico. That was considered an insurrection in 1851 when Pennsylvanians obstructed official efforts to capture an alleged fugitive slave. That was an insurrection in 1856 um, when there were uh, rival forces forces in the United States that were violently resisting the laws on slavery. That was considered insurrection. Um, these aren't just like riots where people are like, we're mad and we're breaking the law by being violent. It was they were resisting the law. They were resisting an actual like 
federal law claiming that that particular law shouldn't exist. They were trying to air a public grievance through force or intimidation with an assembled group of people in the in the in the goal of like overturning that particular thing through violent action. Um, and then on this final thing, so there is a difference between resisting law and breaking a law. Just because you're engaged in a riot doesn't mean that you're resisting the implementation of law. People that are engaged in riots aren't usually rioting to make riots legal. That's what would make that the equivalent. And then just the crime of X is not the same thing as the event of X. I don't know why we keep saying this. Nobody was charged with insurrection, therefore there was no insurrection. If I walk into a room and I see a person's throat cut, can I not say that there was a murder here if nobody was charged with murder? If I see 20 people setting fire to a house and they all run away and nobody gets charged with arson, can I not say that an arson happened? If I look on video and I see that there's 500 people blowing up, you know, some shit and they manage to run away or the cops, you know, can't arrest any of these people or charge them with like the formal, I guess, crime of rioting, does that mean there was no riot that took place? The crime of X is different than the event of X. And right now we're talking about if January 6th was an insurrection, not did any individual person engage in the criminal behavior of insurrection. That would be a separate conversation. If we want to have that conversation, we could, but we would have to first concede that an insurrection did indeed take place on January 6th. And I believe that the Colorado Supreme Court engaged in good analysis and they decided that an insurrection had taken place because it comports with all four elements that I gave to an insurrection that were commonly understood in the historical and legal record around the time that the uh, 14th Amendment was passed when they were putting insurrection in the Section 3 of the 14th Amendment to prevent prior oath takers from holding office again who had engaged in insurrection. Okay. Uh, so that completes round four of the three minute uninterrupted uh, rounds. Uh, if you guys are okay with it, we will move on to the five minute round where you guys are able to actually have open discourse. Well, I have a quick, I have a quick counter if Destiny wants to agree to this uh, for the purpose of, uh, of fairness. Um, I'm willing to do, uh, I'm willing to do two rounds of internal critiques and I'll allow Destiny to start with an internal critique if I can move to an internal critique after. So two five minute rounds of internal critiques. Does that sound fair? What do we mean when we say internal critique? What does that mean? It means that I'm just here to answer your questions for five minutes and you're here to answer mine. Um, sure. Okay, I'll let you go first. Okay, so, uh, okay, just so I uh, make sure I have this right so I can moderate it properly. Is he going to question you, Andrew? And you're going to. Yeah, he gets round one, five minutes, and then I get round two, five minutes. Okay, so basically, okay, so it's essentially a QA between the two of you where, okay, so, our Destiny, if you're okay with that, we can do that, or we can go to just open discourse between the two of you where you I think I feel, I feel like I probably because I feel like um, part of my argument is going to be that he hasn't put forth like a positive position yet for me to even attack or interrogate so I'm not even sure what I would do on the inquisition round so I feel like it'd be better to just do back and forth okay well if you want to do in the back and forth I'm prepared for that too okay but you guys are good with no more you don't need any more three minute rounds to uh, solidify your stance no. no okay so I will go ahead and um, set the timer here for five minutes uh, I will, I guess, who wants to kick it off? Uh, I can kick it off uh, real quick. Okay. So, Destiny, well, would you agree with me that uh, the motivation for demonizing the opposition political party often revolves around calling them traitors, uh, accusing them of treason, and pushing for, um, you know, some type of villainization that they are against the country, they are against you, they are against everybody? Uh, for another debate, maybe, but that's not at all any of the subject here, any of the subject matter here. Well, I think it is. I think it ties in because I believe that the motivation for why you're claiming that the other side are a bunch of insurrectionists, though you have no direct evidence of this and your own criteria is just that of basically a riot, that your motivation is just to demonize the opposition. Sure, but this isn't a debate over my motivation. I could be motivated by 100 million different bad faith factors, and literally none of them would be relevant to this conversation. It could be the yeah. fact that the DNC actually paid me money to give this precise argument, and Kamala is on the phone with me right now, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't have any impact on this particular debate. I think it would. Be, I think that the motivation for why you're making the argument itself would have an impact on the debate. But I am willing to concede that if you just want to keep it to the material, we can. Let's move over to point two then. Point two, you say resisting any law or interference with the course of a government proceeding wouldn't fit rioting itself. How does that not fit rioting itself? Of course it does. Well, let's say, for instance, the purpose of a riot was because you felt like the law wasn't being enforced. It wouldn't make sense to call that part of an insurrection. Let's say, for instance, that there was I a, agree. <laughs> let's say that there was a lynching of a person and you felt like the cops weren't, you know, upholding their duty or whatever. And so you decided to have a, a protest that turns into a riot and you all show up with the goal of protesting and rioting because you felt like the law wasn't being carried out here. You wouldn't really call that an insurrection because they're not trying to contravene a legal process. Um, just because, again, you engage in unlawful conduct doesn't mean that you're trying to resist like the implementation of the carrying out, the resisting the laws. That would be the same case with insurrection then. No, because when you're insurrecting, would, you're would also to require say, intent. 
Right? Yes. Yeah, correct. Yes. So the intent would be the contravening of the Electoral Count Act. When people say we need to march and make our voices heard on January 6th to the Capitol grounds where people are going to protest, they're protesting the execution of the Electoral Count Act, which demanded that Vice President Pence count the electoral votes. Donald Trump didn't want that. He made it very clear in the days preceding him, Bannon, Eastman, Chesbro, and everybody else that was working alongside him, um, Sidney Powell, everybody else, was saying that we need to prevent Pence from counting the electoral vote. That was the execution of a lawful government function. Yeah, so but even if an all act, of, that's people going there to protest Yeah, against. but even if all that's true, Destiny, it wouldn't, it still wouldn't matter because the events of January 6th themselves, the intent of the people could have just been to riot, not indeed to commit to any sort of treasonous insurrection activity. And you have failed to demonstrate this time and time again how this actually would meet the criteria of an insurrection. Them showing up and just like your take in 2021, right, when you say, hey, look, the damage would have been way worse, way worse if they had shown up with the purposes of actual insurrection or some type of uh, 1776 mindset. This is the most armed nation on planet Earth. How in the world can you say these people showed up specifically in order to do that? That makes no sense, man. None of this law, uh, none of that argumentation was stuck with her. People very quick, they obviously showed up to protest the uh, certification of the vote. They were called there by Donald Trump. If on it's January a non sequitur, then you in 2021 were using a non sequitur when you made the argument that from the appearance of this, it could not have been an insurrection. 2021 destiny was incorrect because 2021 destiny didn't have mm -hmm. the historical context to understand an insurrection. If you want to bring him on here and talk to him, you can, but I don't I agree with everything that I You're said. Not, You're not, not you. I am 2024 destiny. I have learned more things. I have done more studying. I've read more papers and I've done <laughs> more research on this. There is actually a strong understanding of what an insurrection is. And there was a strong historical understanding of what an insurrection is. And the idea that a bunch of people were called on January 6th, the date wasn't a mistake. When Donald Trump sent them down there to protest, when he said, we need Mike Pence to do the right thing, what was he talking about? He wanted him to contravene the law, and that's what people marched down there for them no, to do. Donald yes. Trump. Donald Trump said 30 minutes before this began that this needed to remain a peaceful protest. No, he on didn't. Twitter. He never said that. He did. I actually no, have the didn't. tweet. I have on the tweet. He said he to did. He did say that in the speech. He, he said to fight like hell, and in the speech he said that we need to go down. I'm talking about his tweets. Why, 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 would, I, why, out, tweet why would a person dispositive? put out a tweet to be peaceful if their intent was insurrection, Destiny? Why would a person call a protest on January 6th? What do you think they were protesting? What do you mean? They they call protest. People call protests all the time. That doesn't mean we're not the talking about other protests. protests. I'm asking you, what was, the pur what was the purpose of the protest on January 6th? The purpose of the protest was to go out and show support for Donald J. Trump. For what? Well, there, there was a variety of reasons. I no, think give me. Maybe, wait, wait. Are you telling me we can't understand what you the January 6th reasons. protest was about? No, no, no. Are you saying there wasn't a variety of reasons why people didn't show up? No, I think there was one clear reason. Oh, there's only one reason why one everybody clear showed reason. up. Correct. Okay. Ten seconds. Okay. okay, what is the one clear reason? There was not a variety of reasons. Some people didn't show up just because they wanted to see what was happening. Some people didn't show up just to support the president. Some people didn't show up because they really like to go to protest. Everybody showed up for one reason. Right? I didn't Destiny. say everybody showed up for one reason. I said they were called there for one reason, and that was to protest the certification of the election. Guys, 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 that is time. Um, I'm happy to let this play out longer if you guys want uh, and add an extra minute to the clock. Uh, are you guys okay with that? Yeah, we uh, can sure. add an extra minute. I'm fine with that. Clock and well, this is ra still round one of the open discourse, uh, but just try to limit it to one minute, and then we'll go into round two of it, uh, and then uh, and we can go from there. And if we need more rounds uh, at the five minute mark, we can now <laughs> do that. So I'll, yeah, I'll, I ha so I have a problem with him ascribing motivation to all. He says there's one clear reason why everybody showed up. That's clearly not true. That doesn't even logically make sense. He could never demonstrate in a million years that there was only one clear reason why everybody showed up. That's a nonsensical argument, Destiny. That's not the argument that I'm making. If the if the debate that was, was the argument you made. If the, the debate is whether or not January 6th is an insurrection, not did every single person on January 6th engage in the crime of insurrection, or did every single person on January 6th go with the intent to commit? Why did you say there was one clear I reason? I said that there was a clear up. reason why people were called there because there was. Donald Trump called people there to protest not on January 5th and not on January 7th and not in a random part of D.C. and not in a random part of the country. He called them on January 6th to uh, to the uh, to the ellipses that was less than a mile walk away from the Capitol building, which is where he sent every single person after his speech. He called them there on the day of the certification of the votes that after spending days motivation. trying to pressure Pence to overturn the election. That he told them that motivation. they need to go and Destiny. protest for the lawful slates of electors to be counted the illegitimate ones that he submitted and people went there Bro, even they engaged in logic, violent behavior no and they managed to delay the certification of the election Destiny, which is exactly what they so then do you admit then do you admit then that they no, happen to do exactly anything, what, even if i grant your they, logic they happen to do every single Destiny, thing that an insurrection Destiny, called for to without actually engaging in an insurrection 
Give right. me a chance to respond. So I not only not only do I concede nothing, but your logic. We ran out of time on that round. So what I'll do is this. I can see that this is a dynamic conversation, and clearly it's going to go out the bounds sometimes of a time round. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and set the clock for 10 minutes. Uh, that, that completes round one of the open discourse. But I see that this is a dynamic argument. Me just stopping it randomly at five minutes would probably be stupid. So I'm going to let it play out. I'll put 10 minutes on the clock and have you guys go at it. Is that okay with both of you? Yeah, I'm fine with that. Sure. That's you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, because I don't want to interrupt you guys again like that. So I'll just go ahead and put 10 minutes on the clock. Uh, and I will start it right now. You guys, you can pick right off where you left off. Yeah. And sorry about so, that. So, to respond, right? And I'll be more charitable with the time back your way now that we have 10 minutes, Destiny. But it's actually an illogical argument to make to say, even if Donald Trump had some certain intent in his head, uh, that would not mean that the people who were showing up for the protest had that intent. So the thing is, is like for you, both ways, it's a double entendre for your own logic. Either one, you claim, wait a second, there's one clear reason everybody showed up, or two, no, there was no clear reason why everybody showed up. They had multiple motivations, even if Trump himself had a different motivation. This is illogical argumentation. I'm sorry, but this would never be applied to anything. If somebody says, hey, guys, we're all going to show up That's so that we can go either. and... I'm making the argument right now. If somebody were to make the call and say, hey, guys, we're all going to show up to go and blow this building up, and a bunch of people showed up, and then a bunch of them marched with the crowd, and then they all went, and a building got blown up, we wouldn't say, like, oh, well, we don't know what the intention of the crowd was. We don't know what the intention of the leader there was. We don't know what actually happened there, because we can't divine the intention of every single individual per that's person. A, that's a ridiculous straw man. We can say, we can say that's, you can call it a straw man, but the idea that in order for me... Okay, hold on. What would it? What would I need to so show on, then? What would I, no, 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 wait, 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 hold on. What would I need to show? What would I need to show? I'm not spurging, but you're not even letting me. You're not even letting me talk. You, you can respond bro, to my argument. Bro, you can phrase you the question. You made as part an of this. argument. Let me respond, and then you can ask the second argument. I think that that's fair. Okay. So when you're talking about this from a logical standpoint, when you say, "Oh, if somebody called and said, hey, we're all going to blow this building up," yes, I would agree that you could probably ascribe the motivation to it. Then, can you show me a treat, a tweet, or any type of anything from Donald Trump saying, "Hey"? guys show up we're going to do an insurrection no he yes. just made this I can. Shit up. okay fine so i can so as part of donald trump's speech i'll give you two quotes our country has had enough we will not take it anymore and that's what this is all about and to use a favorite term that all you people really came up with we will stop the steal today i will lay out just some of the evidence proving that we won this election and we won it by a landslide this was not a close election the first quote the second quote we must stop the steal and then we must ensure that such outrageous election fraud never happens again can never be allowed to happen again when he says stop the steal when they're at the capitol building on january 6th and when the election is being certified what does stop the steal mean there uh wait a second so first of all you're attributing to donald trump's rhetoric here uh something which he may not have intended none of that actually shows or demonstrates that he was calling for an insurrection on the capitol you are just kind of ascribing that motivation onto it for the purposes of convenience you have to show me there where he calls like your example was, if I say we're all going to show up and blow up this building, that was your example, and then people show up and do it, we can understand their motivation. I agree. You have to show me where he says, okay, guys, we're all going to show up and do an insurrection. You can't then take words that don't say anything about an insurrection and say, but I think he meant that, though. So then just before I answer this, what would I have to show you to show that an insurrection was what Trump was planning? What kind of evidence you would have would you to need? give me the You would have to give me the criteria first and foremost of something which fit the criteria of an insurrection better than some other thing. And you would have to make it refutable to that thing from what people were charged under. So if the, if the criteria is, I'm going to give you what I think an insurrection is, and it fits a different criteria better than an insurrection, and, and under that criteria, that's what people were basically charged under, then it sounds like the other thing makes more sense than an insurrection. So are we that, going with the that argument totally that for X to event me. to have happened, X, like some person needs to have been charged with the crime? No, your logic there is faulty. Then as why, well. why do you have the second no, element let there? Me for me proving, let me respond. Let me respond. You so, can't just talk for twenty minutes and then as soon as I say I, one well, sentence, I didn't. you ramble you can't for another ask twenty me a minutes. Question, okay? and then move I can to another ask question. you a question and then ask another question. It's part of my question. I'm able to do yeah, that. Yeah, but right? I wasn't even you able gave to respond. Two elements to what needed. I needed to prove. Um, the second one was that I have to show why people weren't charged with a crime. I've answered this thing fifty million times. We can center on just this one point if you want. Just because somebody hasn't been charged with the crime of X doesn't mean that an event related to X didn't occur. This is true of yeah, but the opposite would equally be true. The opposite is also true just because they weren't charged with the crime of x 
doesn't mean they committed the crime of X either, Destiny. I'm not Destiny. making that argument. You're using this argument as a way to negate my argument. Just yes. Just because I'm not making the It's a called a counter-argument, yes. No, hold on. That would be like you saying, John couldn't have murdered Jane because John wasn't there. And then I say, well, no, that's not true. And then you're going, well, just because John was there doesn't mean that he murdered Jane. Nope, that's the not opposite. That's the element that I'm nope, giving. Nope, the opposite not, is I've true. I've given you four clear things. Wait, wait, wait. Like, no, no, wait, wait. Like hang on. The opposite is true. Argument that, or give me a definition of insurrection. Or do you think stop, it's Stop, stop, stop. Hang on, hang on. The opposite is true. I'm not saying saying that so you say oh john murdered jane uh but that can't be true because he also may not have murdered jane you're making the claim john murdered jane and so i say okay that's your claim that he murdered jane can you define for me what the criteria would be in which you would consider this to be murder and you go well and then you define for me something that is not murder or fit some other criteria better would not a rational human being including I'm you I'm take way. that and understand Wait, if it fits this other criteria better, it probably isn't actually murder. What part of my? How, can you give me an example? I'm just curious, and I shouldn't even engage with this because. So just up to this point, you've given me no definition of insurrection. Right. You seem unwilling to commit to. It's not definition. my burden. Yeah, I understand that, but I'm just saying you've given me no definition no, I'm not of insurrection. Gonna, I'm not, you seem I'm unwilling you to do nothing. so. So my question my would be: Can you give me a, a it's riot? Not my burden. Can you give me a riot that would fit all four points that I've given of not what my I burden find to do? Well, then you must accept my definition of insurrection. I don't you're need to that, accept. You're saying Why that would I need to accept your definition? Because you're saying that my definition <laughs> of insurrection isn't valid because it also applies to riots. And I'm telling you very clearly, no, it doesn't. Because riots don't typically happen in a planned manner to contravene the uh, execution of some government function or the implementation of some particular law. That's so not I'm what your definition you, says. Your I definition said, said says under resisting, point two, resisting, resisting some any law, law or interfering with the course mm -hmm. of a government proceeding. Correct? Yeah, so you're just changing your definition. I'm not resisting. Do you think that resisting a law is the same thing as breaking a law? Uh, I think that it could be synonymous inside of people's minds. But no, I could see the distinction with merit. But when you say resisting any law or interfering with the course of a government proceeding, that sure sounds like a fucking riot to me, Destiny. OK, can you give me an example of a riot where that happens? We're, yeah, we're BLM burned down a police station. That seems like it's um, First of, resisting that's not, that's, the law. Yeah, so that's what what law were they resisting the implementation of? What law uh, were the they law resisting? The law of arson, the law of rioting, okay. all sorts of laws. So you're <laughs> so, you're telling me that those riots were trying to make it so that arson was legal? Can you point me to a tweet? Can you point me to a statement where somebody was saying we're rioting because we think that the laws oh, against well, arson wait are illegal? A second. Can you show me in your definition where it says that the purpose of the insurrection is so that they can make something else legal? Because that's nowhere in your definition. Doesn't Resisting it? any law or interfering with the uh -huh. course of a government proceeding. It doesn't say yes. anything about making something else legal. You just made it up. No, you're, what, you're saying that they're resisting the law of arson. Nobody is arguing that the law of yeah. arson is bad. Just because you're breaking a law doesn't mean what's you're resisting the, or, the what's law. What's the or? What's What's the or? The or for what? Three minutes? Three it minutes. says or interfering with the course of a government proceeding. Would you not consider if somebody interfered with the FBI, for instance, for that to be interfering with the course of a government proceeding? Or if somebody interfered with police officers, that that would be interfering with the course of a government police proceeding? Police officers are not federal police officers. They if you want to talk federal, about interfering with, if you want to talk about, if you want to, where you are, because we're talking about January it's 6th. Not. We have your definition. It's not where did required. January 6th happen? Who, but it does, we have your definition. Why would I be arguing definition. about the definition of an insurrection in a state when we're talking about a, an insurrection that happened well, on the Capitol grounds? Can you show me in your definition where it says it must be federal? For I don't need to. to. We're talking about an insurrection well, that occurred on it federal grounds. It doesn't matter. So then any any of the criteria which would apply at the state level would still apply at the federal level for rioting. It's the I same thing. I don't know if insurrections are state defined. I'm not aware of that in the historical record. Can you point well, you somewhere? Can't have a state where insurrection? I, I'm not aware you? of something. Can you show me where in the historical record where that's ever I'm been just stated? asking why you couldn't have one. Because I'm not aware of any having occurred historically. That doesn't mean you couldn't have one. You just claimed that it's possible. I didn't I make a claim. Oh, okay. Then we're not. No one is claiming here that an insurrection of a state is possible. No, you okay, are cool. making gotcha. a claim. Right. You're making a claim. I'm on making your a four positive points. claim that there could be a federal insurrection right. because because I have a historical record of there being statements about insurrections federally and historically. I've never had a statement about a state insurrection. I'm not aware of any of those. If you are yeah, aware of one of those, you not feel being free to aware tell me. of any doesn't mean that it, the criteria could not apply to a state insurrection. Correct. That's correct, but we are talking yeah, about that's an correct. insurrection that happened on federal ground, so we're obviously yeah, talking I about agree, federal insurrection. Yeah, I agree, but your definition doesn't require federal anything. That's okay, not what so your definition no, requires. Okay, I think um, uh, if this is if if the only holdout you have is that your definition of resisting a particular law just means that you are breaking a law, 
then I think I'm satisfied at ending it. No, no, it's not. Or interfering with the course of a government proceeding. This could be localized or non-localized. It can be. No one here has made any claims yeah, it about can a non-federal interest. Okay, well, if those are your two holdouts that you think well, okay, well, what is or, is what is or interfering or the with the course of a, of a government proceeding mean? What does that mean? The record that I'm invoking, we're especially talking about things relating to insurrection, and we're talking about the invocation of insurrection, which is my understanding has only ever happened in federal law and in stuff relating to the United States government, not a state government. If you want to show me it happening or show me a historical record or a state constitution, or a state criminal statute that references insurrection, then we can talk about that if you want to. But what does or about... interfering with the course of a government proceeding mean, Destiny? Or interfering with the course of the implementation or the execution of some particular federal law. It has to be federal? Yes, because we're talking about the federal government. No, that doesn't mean it. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're doing a classic kind of Destiny bait and switch uh -huh. where you say in this particular case it would because that's what we're talking about. Okay, that's fair. But that doesn't mean that that's what the definition says. The definition itself does not say that it must be federal. Who, it doesn't say that. With my de what Hang definition on. You it doesn't to say here? that anywhere. What does or interfering with the course of a government proceeding mean? What does it mean? That Real quick, guys, that is 10 minutes. Um, what I could do is, because I see that there's a discussion here between federal, you know, if an insurrection can be federal or state, I will go ahead and reset the clock. I think maybe this is something that we can kind of hone in on. Can an insurrection be, uh, could we, well, obviously we're talking about it from federal level, but can also be at a state level. Do you guys want to shift that conversation to there and make this round specifically for that? Are you guys okay with that? Uh, it's, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, the, a state insurrection, I'm just not even aware of that even being a thing. I don't, I don't think I've ever heard of it. Well, I don't know, Destiny. Were the D.C. I'll cops the, local? I'll put the clock for the five. The D.C. cops were federal. No, all of them were federal, eh? D the District of Columbia is, fe is federal. Yes, so they have federal. no, they have no state police there at all? What state police would they have there? I don't know. I'm just asking. I don't believe so, no. I'm pretty sure even okay. the National Guard there directly, like the chain of command goes up to the president, not a state do governor. States, do states have state governments? Yes. Okay, well, I don't understand why you couldn't have an insurrection against a state government by the definition. You should consult the historical record and come with an example next time. Well, just because you never have one, I'm asking you if you can. I'm not here to debate whether or not you can have an insurrection against a state government. I'm here well, to debate I, whether I or not January 6th was an insurrection because January 6th. No, this is like asking if a murder occurred uh, on January 6th. In that case, I would only be talking about murder as it's defined in federal law, not in state law. We're talking about an insurrection on whether or not January 6th was an insurrection or not. So I'm only going to be yeah. appealing to federal law or federal historical understandings yes, of but, an insurrection against wait, the United States. So I don't know why we're saying, well, what about a state insurrection? Because, I don't know. I'm not even aware well, if a state insurrection is a possible thing. I've never heard semantic, of that reference before. It's not semantic. It's legal and it's historical and that's where the understanding is no, rooted I'm in. fine with a semantic distinction. I'm not, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I'm actually just trying to make one. So it, you, you agree that, this, that you gave me a definition that it nowhere includes the word federal, correct? It's, we're I also didn't give you a definition that includes the word human or that includes the words like in this present point of time and not like in the future mm -hmm. or time traveling in the past or that doesn't include like dimension C-138 or that like there's a million other things so that what? I didn't include. Because, yeah, I don't know what that has to do with anything. Because why would I include the definition of against the United States when we're talking about an insurrection that happened on federal grounds? If it's, because, if, because well, because if you because want, I could, if you want, I could simply matters. add. Okay, well, in that case, I will simply add uh, on my second part. Aren't you appealing to a state court, for instance? Like, what are you, what are you talking about here? Appealing to a state court for what? Aren't you, aren't you appealing to a state court for this definition? Isn't that what you said? Did I get that wrong? I'm I'm appealing to right now. I'm appealing to federal history. What are you What are you talking about? Well, I'm just I'm asking. Where did you get this definition? Let's start with that. Uh, there is a, uh, there's a writer who studied, um, <clears throat> I think it was, I think it was constitutional law specializing in the 14th amendment. Uh, his name is, uh, Mark Graber. And these are the four qualifications that he basically lists out. And then he goes through a number of historical examples to say as much. There's also a much longer paper written about the, um, I think it's like the, the sweeping power of section three written by, um, I think Baud and Paulson who write like a 130 page paper where they go through listing like the historical understanding of insurrection. Uh, if you want, we can dive through any part of the paper or we can dive does through any he, part of the definition. Does he or... say in this paper that it's a requirement that this be done at the federal level? Nobody, I don't think anybody talks about state insurrections. I don't think you can levy war or engage in insurrection against a state. I'm just not aware of that. I've never heard of that brought up before. Yeah, like, I don't think, just, like, I'm for just instance, like, like when you say treason, if I were to give you a definition of treason, mm -hmm. I don't know if I don't know if you can commit treason against like the state of Iowa. I, I think that's only a federal crime. I have no, I have no idea either. That's why I'm asking. I, I, well, I, I can't say I can't say for sure because I've 
maybe there is evidence of it out there, but I didn't come yeah, prepared to debate either. that because it's a debate about federal, uh, a federal well, insurrection. I'm, well, all on I'm doing 6. is doing an internal critique to try to figure out if this is consistent across the board, your definition. I'm not even saying that there's necessarily anything wrong with it, but what I am saying is that there's something wrong with the fact that it seems to fit rioting far better than it would in insurrection. So if we go over these one at a time, an assemblage would fit a riot. That's what Destiny says. By force or intimidation fits a riot. That's what Destiny says. Well, or, it's, it's an, an, assem on, an assemblage of people for, for an assemblage of people for a common purpose. Okay, yeah. an assemblage of people. Yes. Mm -hmm. So riot. they come for a common common purpose. Okay, and then two okay. is to resist any law or interfering with the course of a government proceeding. Right, resisting In, yeah, a law, resist, yeah. resisting a law. That's not just breaking a law, but you're there to to resist a particular law. There's one you really don't like. And then three, you're showing up yeah, for force but, or wait, intimidation. We have the or there. We have the or interfering with the course of a government proceeding. Wouldn't that be even resisting police? Wouldn't that qualify for that? No, a government proceeding would be like the like the um, like the Senate confirming like a like an officer of the of the executive agency or like you a would have to demonstrate that. I don't believe that that's true. I think that you can you can interfere with government proceedings, uh, even even absent there being some actual proceeding that you're interfering with. I think that well, if you would this like to introduce localized laws. That's fine. And if you would like to introduce your own unique it's definition like, of insurrection, you can do why that. Why would I need to do that? Because I'm yours. unaware in the historical record of anybody suggesting that interfering with police officers is a matter of, of insurrection or can lead to an element of insurrection. Are there laws against rioting? I don't know. If, I'm not sure. I'm, I know there's laws against like things that happen in rioting. I don't know if there's like a yeah. law of rioting. Are you bra are you resisting those laws when you're it's, rioting? No, you're not resisting those laws when no, you're rioting. No, unless you're literally rioting no. to say we should make rioting legal or we need to get rid of the prohibition on rioting. And that what, is, wait, why would that be a qualification to resist the laws? Because yesterday. breaking the law and resist. Do you acknowledge that breaking the law and resisting the law are not the same well, thing? Well, tell me what the distinction is, so I'm not confused anymore. Breaking a law is when you do something that's illegal, and resisting the law is saying that this particular I, law shouldn't exist. Yeah, okay, but if you're rioting, how do you go about resisting a law? Well, you could riot for the purpose of overturning a particular law. You might say, yeah, I don't like resisting other laws then, right? No, you're not. You're not saying that rioting should be made legal. Yeah, but even if you weren't, you would still be resisting laws that were on the books against rioting. You're so if I can't divorce. OK, we can just disagree here. If you think that resisting and breaking the law are the same thing, we just we're at an impasse. I didn't say that they're the same thing. I said that necessarily if you're rioting. To resist some other external law. So let's say I think you can, that hold on. Some, do you agree? We I can do this really I, easy. Say, do you agree that you can I engage in writing? No, no. Do you agree that you can engage in writing and accept that you might get arrested for writing? Um. Yeah. Then that defeats your entire argument. You can How? engage in writing without resisting the law of writing, understanding yeah, that well, I'm going to write, but I might be arrested. Actually, for that it. makes my argument. That makes my argument. So the thing is, is that even if I concede that it's true that you could be, um, you know, rioting with the expectation that you get arrested for this X thing, right? You could do this for murder as well. You could do this for basically anything. You could commit any crime with the expectation that you could be arrested for the crime itself. But that would not say that you're not resisting whatever the current laws were that were on the books about that crime. You're saying that the necessity here is that you are resisting some other thing. Fine. But you're also resisting laws by the very nature of rioting. So I don't know why you would have to have something which is externalized while you yourself are still breaking laws. I don't How think... are you resisting the law? How are you resisting laws of rioting by rioting? What well, does because... resist mean to you, though? So, How so do you define assuming... resist? Yeah, yeah. So assuming I can give you an example of this. Let us assume for a second that people are rioting in an abortion clinic because they want abortion overturned. I think this is the spirit of your argument, right? Yeah. So they're rioting in an abortion clinic. They, do, they want abortion to be overturned. You would agree with me then that they are pushing against abortion, but they're still breaking laws while they're rioting, right? So they are resisting current laws, even though they're resisting another current law. And I don't think that you would consider that to be an insurrection, even though it could fit all of the criteria of these elements. It's an assemblage for sure. Uh, you're resisting some other law that you don't like or you're interfering with the course of a government proceeding. You would say that that fits criteria, too. You would say that this is by force or intimidation and you would say it's for a public purpose. But that clearly is not an insurrection, Destiny. The 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 issue is that like abortion is not like a, this isn't a federal law. I could just grant you that we can move to the state example since you seem unable or unwilling to differentiate. Let's assume for a second that it law. was. Let's assume for a second it was a federal law. 
Okay, you know what? Actually, we can do that. Let's say yeah. that the federal government passed a mm -hmm. law either allowing or uh, not allowing all uh, all abortion, okay? The government either allows it, uh, everybody can have an abortion whenever they want, or nobody can have an abortion, okay? Let's say yeah. that I gather a group of people, and I say, listen, okay? Fuck this abortion law. We're all going to get together, and we're going to go protest, okay? Mm -hmm. And we're protesting. The goal of our protest, all right, is we want to we want to get rid of the abortion thing, whether it was passed or, or, or made illegal, okay? We want to get rid of this law. And we're going to show up with a whole bunch of fucking people, and shit's going to get ratty, and we're going to, you know, we know what we're doing, okay? It's the day that in Capitol Hill that they're going to sign the law into whatever. We march down there, and in the course of protesting, like, it becomes a riot, um, and, the, and the riot and everything there was because of that particular law being signed into practice. I would say, yeah, that was an insurrection. You've shown up with a group of people. You're resisting the passage of some particular law. You're showing up through force or intimidation, um, and, and you end up exercising that, and then uh, it's for the public purpose of a particular law that impacts everybody in the United States. I would say that is an insurrection. Yes. Would you say it's so not? If, so if would you say that that's not people, an insurrection? Yeah, I would say that it would not be an insurrection, at least by this criteria. That would just seem to me, again, to be a riot. That would seem to fit the criteria, again, of a riot better than an insurrection. I still can't exactly figure out the delineation point, and I'm trying to. And now, to be fair to you, it is nebulous. I understand it's nebulous. It's but not. I'm also not the one who's making the affirmative claim you are. So you're saying that if a bunch of fucking dope smoking hippies wanted to resist the federal law of being able to smoke marijuana on federal land and they all showed up and they got stoned and then they started rioting, that that would be a fucking insurrection? If they went there with a common purpose, they were trying to resist the uh, implementation and execution of a particular law. Um, yeah, theoretically it could. Well, yeah. no, they're just resisting, right? They're just resisting a law. They're saying, we're here to protest the fact, man, that we can't smoke weed on federal property, man. So they all grab their blunts and they start toking up in protest, then right? Second, and then they start a fire what do you have? I need, and kick okay, some stuff. And so kick some stuff. Do you think that... Is that hang on, I just want to make sure. You think it could be, that yes. that would yes. be an insurrection? The historical record, it could be, Yes. Do you have any or definition of insurrection whatsoever, or do you just think don't they're not real? Don't need to give you a counter definition. If you're not going to give me a counter definition, I can to. give you a, a, the riot definition. Doesn't include um, necessarily a public pers uh, purpose. I've already given examples of riots that wouldn't fit my definition of insurrection, and I really only need to give one, and I automatically win. Um, a riot could very much be in response to a particular sports team winning a game. Boom! That's an example of a riot. It doesn't fit my definition of an insurrection. I've differentiated between the two, and unless you're going to give me any countervailing definitions, I automatically uh, satisfy that element of yeah, my claim. Yeah, but I already claim, did. And then interfering with the course of a government proceeding in and of itself, I think that the necessity of rioting in and of itself. What if you blockade a federal highway? Wait, the necessity of rioting in and of itself? Wait, what? No, I no, think, hold on, yeah, wait, 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 wait. That, to be clear, I just, rioting, did you, do you acknowledge, itself, do you acknowledge that I just gave rioting. you, do you acknowledge that I just gave you an example of a riot that wouldn't be an insurrection under my definitions? So I think that that would even be appropriate. I think that you could give me tons of definitions of riots that would not fit this definition of an insurrection, okay. but that would not mean that this definition doesn't fit the definition of riot better than insurrection. You understand? Wait, so if somebody was protesting and it got really violent after a sports game, how would my definition mm -hmm. fit that better than insurrection fit that better? Well, than what if they were blockading a federal highway? Would that be interfering with the course of government proceedings because there's a federal law that says you can't blockade byways on federal highways? I mean, it, this is the thing. I don't know. This, I don't think that counts becomes, as a, as a, like a proceeding. So, do you see what I mean, though? This becomes so broad that we can begin to just add all sorts of things and call them insurrections. What is the Do government you, proceeding? So, yeah, let me give you an example. So if we're going to be totally good faith here, right, which I've been trying to be this entire debate, mm -hmm. and I think you would concede that. If we're going to be really good faith here, do you really believe that if a bunch of hippies showed up to smoke a bunch of dope on federal property, okay, and a few of them got wild and started a fire and kicked some shit, Right. And fucking, I don't know, uh, you know, somebody got beat up with a bat because there was tens of thousands of them who showed up for that protest. Do you really believe that that would fit the criteria of what most people think of, including you, as an insurrection? Uh, if they if they didn't go there united by like a particular public purpose, um, the public purpose there, was they were going against this federal law. They don't want the federal law. They're resisting that just federal so that we law. don't have to waste any more time on this. If you want to stack this enough, all I'm going to end up doing is saying that like yes, this would agree as uh, I would agree that this would be an insurrection. You have it. You're not able to demonstrate. This is why I'm asking you like historically. Can you give me an example of an event that you don't think I would want to classify as an insurrection? I don't that think would classify I need to as an insurrection. Think, but if you're so just going to give me so examples, where you're just going to make you're going to build well, these events more and more and say we're not being an insurrection. Also like. Yeah, I would say that was an insurrection. Sure. Nobody in good faith 
anywhere is going to agree with you that if a bunch of hippies showed up to resist the marijuana law on federal property and then a few of them started a riot, that they would consider that insurrection against the United States. I don't believe you believe it. I don't believe your audience believes it. I don't believe anybody believes it. So if that is the case, that it's so broad that that will encapsulate that, I'm actually fine leaving the debate there, too. Okay. I mean, again, it doesn't really matter what we would consider to be an insurrection. Mm. The only thing that really matters is what the historical record says is at the time um, was considered an insurrection. And yeah, well, I, I don't again, know, I literally think nobody's prosecuting anybody for it. So <laughs> it do, you don't have to. I've, well, you're just retreading. Technically, I think this might be a gish gallows when you keep bringing up arguments that have been rebuked over and over and over again. Uh, you can keep bringing it up over and over and over again. But again, do you, you we agree that like we can walk in and see, wow, this person was murdered and go, oh, really? Who was charged with murder? Okay, fuck. Or wow, wow, there sure is a riot here. We saw that a riot happened. Well, who was charged with rioting? Well, fuck, I guess. Like, we don't, you don't need a charge of a particular crime. And the barrier or the bar for charging somebody with a particular crime is probably a lot higher than declaring an event a thing itself. It just doesn't make any sense to say because somebody hasn't been charged with a particular thing, a certain event doesn't, doesn't make any exist. sense to say We're not talking about criminal charges. It also doesn't make any sense that to say that because they haven't been charged with a particular thing, that means they're guilty of the particular thing either. I'm that's not, the flaw that's in that my argument. criteria. I multiple my criteria, times. criteria is not. Does yeah, you can actually flow yeah. with this correctly. My criteria is not because they uh, weren't charged. That's why it was an insurrection. I would never use that as part of my criteria. I don't know why. You yeah, know. well, hippies everywhere. Don't show up to federal property to protest by smoking weed. And Because if a couple of you start a fire, you're going to get brought up on insurrection charges and nobody ever. That's insane. We're not, no, I don't know why we keep bringing up insurrection charges. No one is talking <laughs> about a criminal charge or a criminal proceeding here. That's not Yeah, what's a criminal at. charge or a criminal proceeding. You would, that would be a charge, right? Yeah, That's nobody's talking charges. about that here. Nobody's talking about criminal charges here or criminal proceedings here. So you, but, but you would still consider that an insurrection, right? An insurrection doesn't have to be a criminal matter. I just want to make sure that you would still consider that an insurrection. If all four elements of what I said were met, then yes. All right, fine. Well, then I'll leave the debate there. I'm good with that.